Hello, my beautiful computer science students. Welcome to another lesson in Unit 3, Class Creation. And this lesson is going to be over classes and constructors. Now, we've talked a lot about classes so far. We have started using constructors. Um, this, uh, this lesson is actually going to be making a class from scratch, just like the AP exam is going to uh, tell you to do. So grab your notes, get settled in, and let's get working on creating a class from uh, from nothing, okay? We're gonna be writing a complete class um, because the AP exam wants us to, right? There's going to be um, one question on the AP exam that asks you to create a complete class from scratch. So this includes um, instance variables, constructors, as well as methods um, in it as well. So now, um, what we have worked with so far, we are going to be able to create a class from scratch right now, and I think it's good practice. Um, we are also going to be um, learning a bit more about classes and things we can add to it in the next couple lessons as well. Um, but it's a good practice, a good thing to get started early working on these things, right? So they're going to give you instructions to tell you how many constructors to make, what methods to create. Um, and all of this stuff on the AP exam question. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to code everything. Like if it doesn't want a default constructor, um, it doesn't ask for it, don't code a default constructor. Even though when we make our own programs, I always say that's good coding practice is to include your own default constructor. When you're making something like this uh, from scratch um, on the AP exam, only code what they want you to code. Um, so I'm going to give you some instructions below uh, to describe the class that you're going to need to create. Um, the instructions I'm giving you are a bit more detailed than the AP exam will be. Um, the AP exam will not lay it out uh, as nicely as I have in terms of like bullet points and organization. What the AP exam tends to do is present a narrative of the class that they want you to do. So they'll talk about different examples of the class, um, who, who will be using the class or how you'll be using the class, and they'll provide different examples along the way. And you as the programmer are going to have to see that narrative and say, okay, if I have this as my narrative, how can I take that and make that into a blueprint of a class? Okay. Um, so we're just getting started writing our own classes. So that's why I have a bit more detail than the AP exam. Eventually we're going to transition all the way into that narrative. Okay. So these instructions, I'm going to lay out the instructions before we get started with the code. You're going to create a class named swim event that's going to simulate a person swimming a 25 yard pool for an event. You're going to build a swim event and keep track of the position and in, in completing the event. Okay. So you're going to create, create a class called swim event, the variables that you're going to have, you're going to have a string called event name that keeps track of what the event name can be, right? Freestyle, breaststroke, butterfly, backstroke, okay? All of these things in a swimming competition. Um, you're going to keep track of event yards. So this is the number of yards needed for the event, right? The 50 yard freestyle, the 100 yard breaststroke, 200 or 400 as well, okay? And then into yard swim. So this keeps track of the current number of laps that you have swam. So it starts off as zero and cannot exceed the number of yards needed for that event, right? So if you're a swimmer, the idea is you step up to a swim event, you know you're swimming the 100 freestyle, right? So you get on the platform, you know you're going to swim the 100 freestyle, but you start at zero. And then once you enter the water, you go 25 down 25 back and that's 50 right and then 25 down and 25 back and then that's another that's 100 and then you stop right you don't go over that because that your your swim event is done once you reach 100 okay so that's the idea behind yard swim so what i'm doing there when i'm kind of like picturing what the swim event is and putting it into words um and visualizing it that's going to be a good tool to figure out how you can translate that into code Next are the constructor. So this is gonna want you to make a default constructor that sets event name to freestyle, event yards to 50, and yard swim to zero. Pretty straightforward con default constructor. Parameter constructor is gonna set event name and event yards to the values of the two parameters passed, but yard swim gets set to zero because when a swim event is created, you haven't swam any, any, uh, anything yet. So that's why that gets set to zero. So only two constructors before we move on to methods. 
Um, there's going to be a void swim method that increments swim, yard swim by 25 each time it's called, but does not allow it to exceed the event yards. Um, swim yards, uh, so the same name with a different parameter. Remember that's called method overloading, okay? Method overloading, where it has the same name, different set of parameters, so uh, it knows which one to call on based on if it has a parameter or not. Right? So if it's passed into yards, it increments the yard swim by the parameter it is passed. It does not allow yard swim to exceed event yards. So remember, we've seen method overloading in our string methods, right? Think of substring. So substring, if you have, you know, one comma two, that says to get the substring between one and two, right? Which is just the index one. <laughs> but if you have substring, of just one, then that tells you to start at index one and go all the way to the end of the string. And it knows which one to call, which substring method to call based on if it has two parameters or one parameter. So we've been working with method overloading already, okay? So this is no different, this is no different. And then the last method is called event completed that returns true if yard swam is equal to event yards and false otherwise. So this is the entire class that we are gonna have to code. If you want to pause this video and try it on your own, feel free to do that, right? You can write it out. I'm going to have um, my class write it out on paper. Um, the AP exam is going to have you use Blue Book online, so you can type this out digitally. Um, just know that when you are working online and on the AP exam, um, you're not going to have an IDE. Uh, so you're not going to have anything that automatically tabs, automatically en in, um, adds anything into your code to help you or turns red if something looks off, you're not gonna have that. So I recommend either writing it out or maybe just pulling up a Google Doc and typing it and try doing this without an IDE, okay? Um, when you're ready to see what the answer is and some explanation that goes along with the answer, you can start this video again, okay? So we're gonna write. First, we're gonna write out the variables because those are all our instance variables here. So I know I'm going to have public class swim event, and I'm going to have three variables, private string event name, uh, private int event yards, and private int yards swam. So I'm going to declare all of those at the beginning, okay? And I'm just declaring them. They don't get any sort of values. Now my constructors, the default constructor is pretty straightforward. It's just public swim event, and then event name, event yards, and then yard swam is zero. Um, my parameter constructor, it accepts two parameters now. So I just call them A and B as my parameters because they're just placeholders, taking the data that it's passed and putting that into event name and event yards, and then yard swim gets set to zero. Okay. So, so far I've taken care of variables and constructors pretty quickly, okay? Pretty quickly. So when you read the situation on the AP exam, you're going to want to be able to pick out, okay, what data do I need to represent and how am I going to first construct these these items okay now for the methods okay so methods are going to do something interesting the way first method swim increments the yard swim by 25 each time it's called but it does not allow it to exceed event yards so notice this is a void method this is going to modify my yard swim by 25 but it can't exceed event yards so this might be an example of what that looks like. There's a few ways you could do this too, by the way. Um, this is not the only way to code this, um, but I put it as if. If you have your current yard swim, if you, can add, if you add 25 to it and it exceeds the event yards, which remember I don't want, then the yard swim is gonna max out at event yards, right? So if you're running the 100 running, <laughs> if you're doing the 100 freestyle and you swam 90 yards, if you add 20 to that, that's going to exceed 100 and you don't want to swim more than you have to. So if you, I just want it to be capped. So if you swim 25 and it exceeds it, I just want you to swim up to event yards. So that's why I have yard swim equals event yards. Otherwise, if that's not the case, I just want to add 25 to yard swim. So that's how I handled that with that if statement. I'm not returning anything because I'm just modifying the yards swam here, okay? A few different ways you can do that. That's just one example of um, the code that you can write for that. 
My next method is also called swim, but this time it accepts a parameter by, and it increments yard swam by the parameter it's passed, and it does not allow yard swam to exceed the event yards. So almost the exact same thing as the one I just wrote, except instead of just adding 25, I add the parameter. So all I'm gonna do for this is actually change it. So instead of 25 right here, it's gonna be the exact same code, but instead I'm gonna put yards. Uh, because the parameter is going to, um, I'm going to be passed in a specific uh, number of yards that we're going to swim. Okay, so you see here, I put in the parameter, and all that's changed between the last one and this one is just adding in those yards. Okay, and then my last one, boolean event complete. So this is going to actually return a value, true or false, true if the yard swim is equal to event yard, and false otherwise. So just an if, um, an if statement here. If yard swam equals event yards, then I want to return true because the event has completed. The yard swam is equal to event yards and I am done swimming. Um, and if that's not true, then I just want to return false. Okay. And there it is. Now, not saying that all AP exam questions are going to be that easy, um, but uh, a lot of them don't use a ton of code. The um, idea behind them is that you're able to read a situation and make a class, not that you can produce lines and lines of code. Okay, so when you start, when we start to look at the actual past AP exam questions, we're reading a situation and we're making a class from it. It's not going to be sheets of code. Okay, so I don't want you to get ready for that. It's going to be more along these lines, where you have just um, almost smaller pieces of code. There might be a little bit more to it than this. Um, but it's really not going to be long. Okay. The idea is to test your problem solving and your ability to design a program based on a situation. Now that we have made our entire class, which is all the AP exam is going to have us do. Um, I want to do a little bit of practice on using this. Okay. And looking at the constructors, looking at the methods and just tracing through a program that uses some of this stuff. Okay. Now the AP exam isn't necessarily going to ask you to do this in the free response question. This is just more, you know, Goldie's way of adding in a little extra practice. Um, but I think it's going to be good for us here. Okay. Um, so we're going to trace through the following code to see how each of our swim event objects are changed through the execution of this program. Okay. So again, not included on the AP exam, um, but I want you to understand how this program is going to work with the code. Okay. So tracing through the first thing we have here, um, is a swim event, Jesse equals new swim event. So Jesse is created with the default constructor. So his event name is gonna be freestyle, event yards is 50, yards swim is zero. Next we have Lola, she's gonna be created with our default constructor. So she's gonna have an event name of breaststroke. Um, she's gonna swim 200 yards and she's starting off at zero. So these are using our two constructors to create our two objects, okay? Now, if I go to system.out.println, complete completed. So jesse.eventcompleted. So that is calling on this method. And what did this method do? Or what did this method do? It returned true if event yards and yard swim was equal to zero. So this says, okay, go to Jesse's data. Okay, go to Jesse, go to his data. Is event yards equal to yard swim? Okay, return true if it is. If it's not, return false. Okay, so jesse.event completed is going to return false. So to the council, to your, you know, your output there, false is what is going to get printed. Okay. And then now we have Jesse swim. Okay, so notice how for all of these next lines, we are using our reference variable name in order to gain access to the data. So Jesse means we're going to Jesse's data and he's going to swim. What did the swim the swim method do that has no parameters? The swim method with no parameters, all it did was added 25 to yard swim. So yard swim for Jesse, it gets 25 added to it. And the reason is because if you add 25 to it, it doesn't exceed event yards, okay? So yard swim for Jesse is now 25. Lola swim 50. So that meant Lola, um, she's going to be uh, using the swim method that actually accepts a parameter as an in the integer parameter. So we're going to go to that. At 50 is going to get added to Lola's yard swim. 
Jesse gets 30 added to his, um, but what do you notice here? I didn't change that to 55. I didn't take 25 plus 30, and that was because if the yard swam plus yards, which is 30, if it was greater than 50, I just set yard swam equal to event yards. So that's why yard swam just got 50, okay? Lola swims another 50, so she's gonna be at 100 yard swim. So now when I go to print off, is Jesse, has he completed the event? Um, we check to see is event yards equal to yard swim. Uh, for Jesse, that's gonna return true, okay? For Lola, that is going to return false because event yards um, and yard swim are not equal for Lola. So just an example of how we can use the code we developed in order to um, control these objects and control control their data, okay? On the AP exam, um, you'll be asked to create that class from scratch. Um, stuff like this, this is gonna be more in the multiple choice section. Um, this can also be, uh, they might also have this um, kind of laid out in a table format too, where they um, say, okay, these lines of code are run with the class and then this is the output. So they might do that to help kind of paint the picture of the class they want you to create as well. So it's important that you kind of have seen this and can trace through it and understand what that means as well. Okay. So that reaches the end of our notes today. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me. Um, if you've liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great CSA content. But until then, I will see you in the next video.